Hey, good morning. It's Thursday, August 19th. Thanks so much for being here. Our everyday thought today might sound a little bit different than what I normally do, but it's, it's an important question to ask. One of the advantages of having lived a while and talked to a lot of people is there seems to be one question that we don't address enough in light of the sovereignty and power of God. And it's just this. How did you get to be you? How did you get to be you? Now, I can't answer that question specifically for you, but I can answer it in the guidelines of Scripture and in terms of your relationship with God. And you see, it's, it's vital that we understand that there is a God, as Francis Schaeffer used to say, there is a God and he is not silent great title of he has three books that I especially like but that was that particular one he is there and he is not silent Schaefer makes the assumption that God is there and he's active and he's engaged so we could assume there is no God but then if we assume there's no God then the question of how you got to be you is really moot because all it is is just random circumstances and good or bad luck there's no plan or purpose behind it at all. And that's pretty discouraging. But if we're going to take a biblical understanding and make the assumption that there is a God and that he's not on coffee break, he's engaged in our lives to bring about a particular purpose, then the question how you got to be you becomes extremely relevant and important. A lot of us have struggles, unbelievable struggles. You look back at your life history and just the people that God has given me the privilege and blessing to know, some of their stories are, are I, I can't even describe them. They're beyond heartbreaking. And yet somehow God is able to work in these individuals and bring goodness and joy to them. Another way of looking at this is if we took a video camera and we did documentaries on oh so many biblical characters, if we stopped at any point along the way, we would say, well, this person's a failure, up to and including Jesus Christ. If we followed him around and stopped the video before the story was done, we would say that the man is a failure. Even at the Last Supper, at the end of his three years of personal ministry, of working with the disciples and, and caring for them and teaching them, giving them instruction that nobody has ever heard. After the Last Supper, the disciples get together, Jesus goes off to pray, and you know what they start arguing about? Who's going to be greatest? You look at that, you say, what? This Christianity business has no hope. But God even used that to bring about good things for his honor and glory, to produce the church, not the replicas of the church that we see so often, but the true church that is committed to God. So your particular life story, how did you get to be you? Sometimes we want to look at it and we wish this hadn't happened, or I wish that person hadn't made this decision, or I wish I had never met this other person. Or why did this have to happen to me? But the problem is, you pull that out of your story and you no longer have a story. You're no longer you. We no longer have the opportunity for knowing the grace and redemption of God and how we fit into what his purpose is. Each of the hardships, the sufferings, the sinful people that we've met, the sinful mistakes we've made, the mess-ups that are out there, the particular challenges we face. <clears throat> Maybe you have a parent that you're not very happy with. If you pull that person out of the equation, you don't have you anymore because you don't exist. But rather, we have a God 
whom the book of Ephesians says is the father of all of us and is watching over us. If we look at Psalm 139, we see God's intimate care in all of our lives from the time we were knit together in the womb until the time that he is appointed for us to go be with him. And he's intimately involved in all of those particular steps. So I can look at that and say, well, God is messed up or it doesn't make sense. Or I can look at that and say, despite all the hurt and the confusion and the hardship, God has brought me to this point in my life right now where I could know him. And I can look back and see that what God has done is good and gracious. And that with all, all those things, I wouldn't be here. It doesn't mean that we excuse sin or we don't, we, we write off and forget about what we've done. No, what it means is I see life in the context of a relationship with a God who knows me and loves me and cares for me. And can take all this myriad of mess that is the backstory to each of our lives and in beautiful ways that we can't imagine makes us whole. And then he adds to that, this mess, he adds to that, this beautiful story of redemption, where he makes this life flow in to eternity. And that's what makes the whole thing make sense. That's how you got to be you. God orchestrating, planning, doing what we would not choose to do for the one purpose of bringing to the, us to the point where we would know and trust and learn him. I'll come back on this tonight. Give me some thoughts and be back. But this is such an important truth. How did you get to be you? Because God is actively involved in your life so that you would know him more closely. And when we can grasp that, there is unspeakable joy. Thanks so much for uh, being here this morning. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, do that and turn on post notifications so these videos will come to you right, you know, automatically. Uh, please check out the website everydaytalk247.com. And thanks so much for the privilege of just being able to talk to you each day. It's a, it's an honor and privilege for me. And Lord willing, we'll talk to you tonight. Bye bye.